the most emotional version of the Mercedes E-Class. The E-Klasse, as we say in Germany. Now in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! Here in the front, the Mercedes E-Class facelift for all versions has a more modern front grille, wider, flatter, more sporty, also in this A-form. So the top part is shorter, the lower part is wider. This they mean by A-form. This is the AMG line. So we have the diamond pin front grille, my favorite Mercedes grille. So it really looks quite fancy, contrasting lower part, a very strong red color definitely. So also fits to the convertible. LED is now standard for the main headlamp unit for all E-Class versions and the LED multi-beam, so the more extensive one with high beam function, that is then an option. And you can see also they change it, just one stripe for the E-Class here now and they distinguish C-Class, E-Class and S-Class with these dots. So C-Class one dot, E-Class two dots, and the S-Class with three dots inside then. Now we have a couple of seconds to decide from which side will I enter the stage today, our famous guessing game. And the length is at 4 meters 83, 15 foot 8 or 190 inches for the convertible and the coupe. So they are a little bit shorter than the sedan and the estate of the E-Class. Yeah, it was this side here today. In Germany, Europe, we would start with 17 inch wheels. These are the optional 18 inch wheels. They would be standard in the US and also standard for different models depending on the engine size you pick. So in the US, an 18 to 20 inch maximum. The E53 would start with 19 inch and then 20. Uh, maximum so it looks kind of small because this here then 80 inch plus winter tires of course would look different with summer tires and of course if you go for a bigger wheel choice the standard suspension already has some adaptive elements and optional we also have it here today you can get the adaptive air suspension about 2000 euros or dollars extra which gives even more comfort and more variety the roof can be bought here in black but also in blue red or that or oh yeah that's german so in <laughs> black blue red or brown so you also have some styling choices right there today the red black combination so here one straight design line here with the chrome that's a beautiful contrast and really very strong shoulders right here and um, as for the convertible top it's of course you know really cool to have the soft top because you can have a better integration here of the whole you know of the whole unit and then also better store it in the rear without losing too much trunk space and what's also cool is then when you hold the key fob here with the opening button you can see you can actually yeah, ro remotely almost you have to stay close to the car for that for safety reasons you can open that convertible top that's really fancy of course and works up to a speed of 50 kilometers an hour and you see that the designer is also being kept when the car is open right here so that's the thing here about beautiful cars you can also lower the windows for example with the key here just one straight design line this is the reason why it very works you know, works very well also with the open top. In the rear, the E-Class facelift brings new tail lamps for the Cove and the convertible. The change is not that big, was bigger with the sedan, but here also updated, more modern light signature here, a little bit more segmented, but very beautiful and interesting. E450, six cylinder for today, and also a very seamless design here overall. In the lower part, <whistles> out of fake exhaust police, Outer tip, beauty, real exhaustion on the inside. Today, the E450 3 liter inline six cylinder with mild hybrid technology, EQ boost, so some recuperation is possible and also some electric boost. And so the acceleration figure is about five seconds. And horsepower wise, between 360 and 370 horsepower 
depending on the market. There's also the E53 AMG available, 435 horsepower, 4.4 seconds is the acceleration figure right there. And uh, V8 is not available for the convertible or the coupe. And in Europe we also get the 2 liter 4 cylinders, both petrol and diesel. And also a lot of them have been upgraded now with mild hybrid technology, especially the petrol ones. This is the car key, slim, light, beautiful, elegant, really satisfied with that. Door closing sound, of course, with the convertible or copy is not that good because, you know, there's no frame around it and so on. Then inside of the doors, nice materials, the red being used, and you can also get the matte wood here at the insert here. So that's a very cool thing, doesn't leave fingerprints. Seat control from the insert here, optional Burmester sound system with a very great sound so love that some space at the inside of the doors this also being the amg interior line so here amg package with the floor mats and also the amg steering wheel two new steering wheels with the e-class now with the facelift this one here being the amg one has a two fin design a space in between the other one is kind of closed this one looks fancier also has a thicker grip right here so for as for that Going for the AMG line or for the E53 does make sense to get this steering wheel. And by the way, in the sporty setup, you can also get this steering wheel with a complete microfiber wrap. Um, there's one version with microfiber at the outside, but the best one would be complete microfiber wrap. The dynamic car, so called at Mercedes, is really cool, better grip, and also warmer in, um, in winter times. And cooler in the summertime so that really pays off now news mbox infotainment for all the e-class standard but standard would be 10.25 inch so with bigger bezels and smaller screens this here is the optional two times 12.3 inch so again standard 10.25 inch and optional this 12.3 inch two times left and right new with the facelift but in both cases you get the voice input here the seats animal skin wrap optional in this case in Europe we start with a very good setup where this middle part this one exactly following this line would be in fabric that stays cooler in summertime and warmer in winter times and also the inside here and Artico leatherette or ambitex called at the outside that would be the best choice and in the AMG line or in the E53 you can also get the middle part with Dynamica microfiber as standard that is also available in the US so if you want to go for a better comfort and climate comfort for the seat and also animal free have to go for the e53 in the us in europe in germany you can also go for the base fabric version beautiful is definitely the beige interior and good that the top part was kept in black so there's no reflections then in the windscreen getting inside it's of course not a small convertible but the cool thing about an e-class convertible yeah shoe tap is mandatory so you have a lot of comfort when seating here it's like in a you know e-class sedan or something so that's pretty cool headroom plenty of headroom yeah of course <laughs> the roof is uh, um, open at the moment but really you have a very comfortable seating position adjustment then from the inside of the doors so it gives you this sophisticated e-class experience the c-class convertible easier to move around in the city for example mid-size convertible but then you don't have this you know very luxurious atmosphere you have right here and uh, yeah I mean we can um, we can also close the, the top once again we can see what about the headroom and so on steering wheel can be put up and down in and out electronically by the way and again good grip here at the steering wheel now with a closed top and um, I can move the seat even a little bit lower here actually so like this and then there's plenty of headroom although I'm one with a six or six of one. And actually the convertible has more headroom than the, than the coupe. So I um, realized that recently. And even when it's 
closed you have different interior seating available this one's also a very sophisticated one with the dynamica microfiber in beige at the inside here also at the a pillar really top notch now the interior overview where you can again see this dual screen setup and there's this you know overlapping it's actually quite cool because it protects against sunlight and so on then here ambient lighting is integrated right there that's actually pretty cool also inside the air vents round air vent style here again the matte wood matte wood styling also here there are different stylings now available since the facelift for the middle console that there's also an alternative to just piano lacquer that's actually quite cool once again the new amg steam wheel here with the you know split left side you actually control the left instruments and also the cruise control and on the right side you can control the right screen and also can change volume and pick up the phone and so on but the right one here is also then a touch screen that is possible and also the lower controller can be used and also this turning knob can also be used so really redundant control possibilities but that's actually a good thing so you can actually just pick what you prefer then also here to change the temperature is still possible in a manual way so that's still a rather easy and straightforward design and we also have a hotkey to get to the gps map i also like that and here in the lower part we can open this one here have a usb-c connection for your smartphone and apple carplay and auto inductive charging pad is also possible some space right here and of course this drive selector is right here for the driving modes we can also lift up the air suspension when we are driving down basement garage ramps or something and here is the controller for the convertible top for the air scarf system for the neck heater and also for raising or lowering all windows at the same time and also for more storage space with two more usb-c supplies now the digital instruments they are very flexible in the usage so you can have different information in the middle part for example like some you know um, gps input or the map for example here it is also possible to um to put the map all over the screen that would also work here like this it's also possible to put the map all over the screen then you can also go back to that main menu and also have different stylings this is the more classic style but you can also go with the sport styling to give it a little bit more spice head up display is always a nice option with the speed and also some traffic sign recognition would be put put in there and also some gps information and there we go with the main screen now including the mbux also with the voice input and you can also search for car functions for example hey mercedes how can i help activate steering wheel heating I'm sorry, this vehicle does not have steering wheel heating. So in this case, I know it doesn't have the, it is an option, 350 euros, by the way, steering wheel heating. But in this case, I could activate it when it would be possible. But here the car then is telling me it's not available in this car. It was not built in that. Yeah, interesting. Here the screen has a good visualization, I think. So also when I take a look at the GPS, map looks quite fancy or with the small clouds here beautifully done and um, there's also an apple carplay um, hotkey here um, so with a good sound system here wow the burmester sound system is really really nice so top notch and this is the carplay integration you can hop back to the mercedes menu like this also have the settings here and so on the comfort features you can activate a relaxing massage this is an option of course with a very sophisticated you know dot design you know with these air cushions really cool ambient lighting of course setting all the way to thomas blue or ocean blue it's called here but you can also have some other color set right there and of course brightness always all the way up an upgrade for the rear view camera you can see it is panning like this here and this is not physically done but it's like inside the widescreen image that is digitally panning depending if you go right or left and then you this you have this blue outline here around the drone view from above fake drone view from above and this blue 
outline is moving inward then when you're close to another object that you can see that also visually a little bit more. What about the rear seating? Yeah, I smell the comments where I have the time code with Thomas in the back seat. That's really popular here when I enter vehicles that don't have too much space on the interior in the rear. So I have to crouch inside like this and in the C-Class convertible it would hardly work when I put the seat back here now. Headroom wise it works when I don't put my spine all the way up then it works and I left it closed down that you can see. You know headroom is somewhat limited but of course it's also soft so when I put my spine up I don't you know hurt my head and it is a little bit cramped in here you have a separate climate unit here and when you put the seat here back then it directly works like this when there's also a tall driver uh, so um, I mean yeah I can squeeze myself in here so it is possible to drive with four adults more or less definitely and this is also a reason when you would go for the air cap system so there's this air cap system um, that is a wind deflector that is also making it possible to switch you know with people in the back back and forth so in the front there's like a small area lifting up very interesting at the same time there's a small wind deflector lifting up in the rear about 800 euros extra but there's still a classic wind deflector um, possible you see there's some there's some classic holes here right and left this would be around 400 euros so half the price and this has a better effect so if you rather go with two people and use the rear bench so just from addition for additional luggage go for the classic wind deflector save the money for the air cap system it is doing better than the air cap system the air cap system does actually and what i have here is the classic wind deflector that is stored between the rear seats and the trunk actually quite interesting solution you just fold it out and uh, like this and also then like you know like like this then when it's installed i can soon show you that and then this one will be the best wind protection and actually also shows both is possible to have the classic wind deflector and the air cap system if that's really needed it's another question this one will do just fine but you can go for both here we go now it is installed the classic wind deflector like this so it blocks then the rear seats but if you don't use them usually for passengers it doesn't matter that much and you can also put this one here easily back down again for some you know better view to the rear if you're driving then with closed top once again and when you open the top then just put it up manually right here and you can at all times also remove it completely in here again and there it's also secured it's not too hard to deinstall it again what about the trunk area open it like this here with flipping the logo and then you can see it is somewhat limited of course with the convertible this is when the roof is open so you see here a cabin trolley still fits underneath that's okay and you can also push it inwards and the length here normal length of the trunk would be yeah a little bit less than the meter that's still somewhat okay i would say in length and the width here to the limited area is a little bit less than 90 centimeters of course wider here just in that top area in the very front and this one here can be moved inside for more trunk height then when you have the roof closed and this one here the the height when it's open this here 26 centimeters and the top one would be less than 40 centimeters so that's then the difference then here we go we can push a button in the top part of the trunk and then this one becomes available when the roof is actually closed and then we can also left and right fold the seats then i can go around here and fold the seats like this and then you can also load things through hey what's up it's dj thomas in the house in this case not this jockey but driving jockey and DJ Thomas bringing you Thomas's driving lounge with the Mercedes E-Class convertible and you know at the time of the recording of this video it's quite cold outside but that doesn't mean that you cannot drive with open top that's why we're going to start with that and the cool thing about soft tops is you can drive up to 50 kilometers an hour here so you know like 25 miles easily and can open that thing and that is so cool 
that is so helpful. So if I remember like old soft top convertibles or high, especially on the hard top convertibles where you cannot do that, this is so helpful that you are actually able to do just that. This is really cool. And I mean, you've seen it here, the change on the image. Ah, it's so great. The sun is coming out just a little bit now. And that's also the thing about the Mercedes E-Class convertible. It is an all-season convertible, not only for uh, Los Angeles residents. So even, you know, there are basically three typical convertible markets in the world. California, UK and Germany. <laughs> that's just it. And you can actually drive it also all season long in Germany. Main thing is definitely about the wind deflector. So I told you earlier, for like 400 bucks, you can get the classic wind deflector in the rear. I would always recommend that unless you are frequently using then the rear bench for three or four people driving. And then you have that air cap system here. And you know, that thing in the back driving up and also this small spoiler there in the top. And it is not as effective as the classic wind deflector in the rear. However, it does bring down at higher speed, low frequency noises. Where we like where wind noise would go like bop, 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 bop. It would more like, you know? So it makes the low frequency wind noise more high frequency. So better bearable and also reducing the wind turbulence inside the cabin. However, now for winter times, not wearing it at the moment for camera purposes, but I can always recommend wearing a beanie just inside the convertible, even when you have the air cap system. You know, there's also the air scarf system. I can also activate it at the inside of the doors when you have that option. And the thing is, to me, I mean, I, I know a lot of people who love that system, but to me, either it's really warm in the convertible, I don't need it, or it's really cold. And then you're wearing, you know, like a thick jacket, a coat and something, and then it's not really reaching your neck. So that's the reason to me, it's not the most important option. It might be for something, you know, let's say it's like spring or autumn and you have just, you know, not that very thick clothes. And then you think, oh, miscalculated a little bit. It's a little bit colder than I thought. And then activate the neck heater. That could be something. And this is so amazing here. Some winter sun, oh, it's so beautiful that's why I love driving convertibles and I mean when you look at the camera images you know when I'm sitting here you see a lot of light and air around me and you see more of the background and so on you see light from the top this is so beautiful just with the camera image that you think I want to be in that place at the moment and driving that convertible and that's what I love about convertibles and also one of the other main thing about this vehicle is it's an E-Class. Yes, it's an E-Class. I mean, that sounds really obvious, but it's also one of the main characteristics of this vehicle. It's the E-Class convertible, and that also distinguishes it to the C-Class convertible, meaning what? You're driving a convertible, yes, but you really feel that you would be driving an e, like an E-Class sedan. The driving feeling, E-Class sedan and the E-Convertible and the E-Coupe is not that different. You really feel the distinguished feeling, this is the Mercedes E-Class. Especially then here with the adaptive air suspension. I mean, we know that the base suspension, which already includes adaptive elements, is already doing great. And you can still drive it comfortably with the base suspension with the E-Class and 20-inch wheels, the most uncomfortable setup, but will still be comfortable. This year, what we're driving at this moment, is the most comfortable setup for an E-Class in general. 18-inch wheels, yes, okay, for the sedan, there's also seven. I mean, in the US, it's, you know, 18-inch for the convertible standard, but you can also go 17-inch in Germany, I think, and of course with the sedan. But we have 18-inch wheels here and the air suspension, the optional one, adaptive air suspension, more than 2,000 euros extra. And this is just heaven of a ride, you know, really soft carpet driving feeling. At the same time, it's not too soft, so you don't feel like you're wobbling around all the time. And you also have the dynamic select here, meaning that you can go to the sports mode and then make it stiffer. Also response from the engine is a little bit sportier then and so on and so on. So you can really pick that. 
great here also with the face step, the new steering wheel. As for the steering characteristics, it's to me more fine-tuned. You know, Mercedes steering wheel steering ratios are not in a way that they are too progressive. They are more for running straight in a more relaxed and calm manner. At the same time, it feels very natural. There's no dead zone area. You just have to steer a little bit more than you would steer with BMW, Audi, and VWs and so on. But since the face you know, you have a, somewhat like a better grip with the steering, especially the AMG steering wheel, my favorite one. It looks sporty here, cooler here with the horizontal fins and, you know, the whole grip handle you have on that, that's somehow cooler. Um, but at the same time, told you earlier, the step backwards, definitely these capacitive buttons at the steering wheel, just so annoying when you want to control something and you over control something and you go back again because they are really really sensitive so that was better before so not always we have just steps ahead we have also steps back yeah i always wonder like why does no one test it and someone say like come on guys seriously you know where are those guys saying that i i don't understand i really don't understand yeah it looks fancier than before, but to control it while driving, yeah, really something more tricky. So we can easily go for a relaxed ride here with the E-Class convertible. We've also driven the E53. You should also check out this review later, of course, with more performance. Also the suspension setup. We also had air suspension there, but the suspension setup there is a little bit stiffer. However, I wondered positively that the E53 is more comfortable than before. So they also really changed some hardware parts in the air suspension with the facelift for all air suspensions of the E-Class, no matter which version you have. And that also does a good job in, you know, having a better variety between sportiness and comfort. However, here you feel that the E450, E450 here, is set out more on the comfortable note, of course. So if you want a little bit sportier, go for the E53. And remember, I told you earlier that in the US, for example, you can only get non-animal skin seating. So the, then the Dynamica microfiber on the inside, the Artico or Ambitex leatherette on the outside with the E53. Um, yeah, so probably in the US, I would go for the E53 now, um, being that for the main reason. And since it's more comfortable than before, I don't see you know, anything speaking against it. However, if you stress more comfort, and also are in, in Europe or Germany, you can also go for the more comfortable choice here with the E450. It's the same base engine, this new inline six cylinder, three liter. Here with a little bit less horsepower tune than in the E53, but that's you know, no problem. We are also soon close the to top and do acceleration run. Here then around five seconds is the acceleration figure where it's 4.4 with the E53, but it's still, you know, it's the same base engine, it's a very good one. And we also have this EQ boost and also possible EQ charge. What does it mean? It's the MHEV system, mild hybrid technology. So when I'm going downhill here now, I think you can also see that here in this part, this green, um, green charging level, that means there's recuperation happening, not Compare it to a battery in a true hybrid or in a plug-in hybrid or electric vehicle, just some recuperation is happening in there actually. But this is then better for efficiency in general. And you can also use it then again as an EQ boost means as an electric boost of the acceleration. And here, once again, so cool. I'm going to the motorway and I can close the top, no problem. However, I really have to say, I tested quite a lot of times now, even here with this convertible, you can also drive in a you know in a fast way with the open top. So driving one kilometers or 60 miles now on the motorway with open top is possible. Then again, this air cap system. The difference is that you change a little bit of the frequency of the wind noise with that. But once again, especially when you're driving higher speed motorway, go for the classic old school wind deflector it will do even better especially at higher speeds no doubt about that and then you close the top and you think wait a minute am i driving a mercedes e-class coupe or something a coupe because this acoustic top there 
remember, available in different colors, black, red, blue, brown. It's so well insulated that you lose the feeling of, oh, I'm driving a convertible and it's loud when it's opened up, but it's also loud when it's closed up. No, even driving higher speeds, you know, there's hardly any difference in anymore, only if you really drive super fast, like 160 kilometers an hour, like, you know, 100 miles per hour, then you would still feel difference, E-Class Coupe sedan, to the convertible where the real close top cars are better as for the noise insulation. But here, normal motorway speeds and so on, so well insulated that you can really relax. And that's also a little bit different to the C-Class. It's a little bit louder, although also smaller and more agile and better to use in the city. The E-Class more bulky, so for some European cities you might consider mm, maybe go for a mid-size convertible, like a C-Class convertible. Audi A5 convertible, BMW 4 Series convertible, then the bigger ones, like here with E-Class convertible. So that's always a matter of how long and big are the parking spots you have. Then again, if you think about comfort, here you have a more comfortable, more sovereign seating position and so on. So that might then speak for the E-Class convertible, for example. Here we can also activate the cruise control with your left thumb and also has a lane keeping function. All the latest tech can be ordered here as for all the assistance systems. And once again, it's more complicated to change the speed here now with a capacitive function. So you slide with your left thumb for one kilometer steps and when you press, you do 10 kilometer steps. I mean, that you learn time by time, but also here, I think the older system where you had this, you know, this jog where you could push little or push more up and then change in smaller or bigger steps, it was just easier to handle. And yeah, you can just say it looks fancier, but it's harder to control. Traffic sign recognition, now the car, I'll see line of sight here and a head-up display to one kilometers an hour, 60 miles an hour and then also the speed of the cruise control is being adapted as for that. So that is also well done, definitely. Lines for monitor is also here, there will be a, like a red triangle in the side mirrors, but I mean here with the coupe and the convertible, it's not that necessary as it would be with other vehicles because there no, there's no B-pillar. Here now the lane keeping and the active lane keeping assist was also active. See here, car is keeping me in the lane, and that's also well done. Wasn't really real recognizing that inside the uh, construction lane, and now also taking me, please keep your hands on the steering wheel, evil Thomas, don't do that. And then I also do that. Yes, Mr. Car, <laughs> I do that. And here again, nice highway speed, so relaxing once again, and keeping it all normal. Oh, wow, like there were some waves. Here and then that's so so cool to feel when the air suspension is evening out these waves, you know. And yeah, not to not to forget when we would have the the fabric, the cloth seating would be even more comfortable because it adapts better to the body. Now we can go to sport well, we can even go to sports plus mode, I think. Um, after all this the all-wheel drive version for Matic, and then we can also show you the performance here of that. Um, of that six cylinder. Yeah, it was a little bit hard to control that stuff here. I'll wait for the next car to pass. Just checking consumption before that. Yeah, soon talking about the consumption from 60. Well, that's 180 kilometers an hour. Should be enough for now good performance and also nice sound I think here in the sports mode also better from the sound and there you have it 160 kilometers now and I mean yeah from the left side there from the non-existing B pillar I hear some wind noise but I mean we're driving a convertible at 160 kilometers an hour that's so silent it's more silent than a lot of other cars that have closed tops so great performance as for the wind noise then here also more response, throttle, steering, 
Suspension is stiffer now, right here. Good lane change, so in the sports mode, it stiffens up. You don't have this, you know, flying carpet feeling of the air suspension again. Fine tuning the brakes here, good control of the vehicle, doesn't feel too heavy. And we're going back to the normal mode, or here to the comfortable mode to have more comfort than from the air suspension. So you see, this car can do both. Before that hard acceleration, by the way, I was at about 10 liters on one kilometers fuel economy. In summer times and really gentle, you can get it closer to nine liters on one kilometers, but in general, 10 is somewhat realistic. Of course, that's not, you know, yeah. <laughs> Should, can always be less, no doubt about that. That would be some, you know, some 20 mpg plus US and less than 30 mpg UK in that region you have to calculate. Now in the tunnel here, once again, beautiful as for the ambient lighting. Look at that, swinging here, then together with the blue background of the MBOX infotainment system, of course, for that reason and also for Thomas Blue reasons. Nice to pick the blue ambient lighting in the air vents here, then the central purity concept introduced a couple of years ago here then again so a pure line but also a central line and ambient lighting hidden behind this line right here beautifully executed so ambient lighting that's also one thing where mercedes is always on top of their game whoa <laughs> that's light again now and driving towards the sun blinded by the light right so once again to 100 kilometers an hour and so this is a convertible you can use for a lot of different purposes. Long-term motorway driving, driving with open top in winter times, driving with closed top at higher speed. Yeah, definitely one of my favorite convertibles. It can only be a but when you are a lot of times in situations where you need parking spots and it's just too narrow in your city. Then of course this bigger convertible can be a problem other than that, if that's not one of your issues or not one of your concerns, then this one I think to me is one of the convertibles to go for in this you know high premium luxury segment. I feel more at home and also more comfortable than in some of the more expensive ones like you know the Bentley Continental GTC. Um, it's just too plush, too much and so on. This one here you still feel you know definitely more at home um, as I said. I can deactivate the ASCAF here. Was running all the time an hour. Yeah, I was feeling more warmth now when the top was closed, obviously, because otherwise, I mean, the ASCAF wind is coming from here and the wind, other wind is coming from the front, so it's basically pushing back the, the warm energy as well. There's more snow than here now than before. This area here is lying a little bit higher than the area we were in before. Here, see again how I have to turn the steering wheel a little bit more than again not that progressive as with other brands, but still a good natural driving feeling. I can really recommend the AMG steering wheel once again. And there, that brings me back to the 450 versus 53. So I took a look at the US build or configurator as well. And when you add the AMG line to get this steering wheel, for example, then you almost can go for the E53 again, price-wise. Yeah, 19 inch wheels also included right there. So, um, yeah, I really like the 53 also as we uh, were driving these, but both here are actually really, really cool, and I like that in 96 cylinder. This mild hybrid system is not, not a game changer as for the fuel economy, we realize that. However, it can't hurt, and especially when you're driving downhill, you know at least not all of the energy is being lost. So, once again, good performance from that engine so relaxing to drive and enjoy uh, really a car that can give you so much pleasure and is really very very well balanced so definitely one of the cars that truly has some auto gefühl which is if you don't know <laughs> don't happen to know translation of car feeling easier than you thought maybe so i really hope you enjoyed wait a minute one more ambient lighting and acceleration. I mean, it's a six cylinder, right? And it's a Mercedes. So why not enjoy ambient lighting and uh, the acceleration one more time, right? So we go right here now, once again in the tunnel, that you can take a look at that. 
it's always good to have these, you know, these light changes and again the ambient lighting really cool. Oh yeah, I can show you what I can um, still show you here is so here when you um, go for the temperature change, vents are in red when you put it warmer and they go blue when it, I make it colder. So imagine I would set the ambient lighting to let's say green now. It will also appear blue when I put it colder and red when I put it warmer. Just not changing to blue, obviously, because when it's already blue, it can just be blue, you know? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Pur purple is also like a very interesting color. So when we are already at speed, what about the acceleration? And that's this time not sport, uh, sport plus, but sport mode from, yeah, from 100 kilometers an hour. Well, that's 150, or oh, almost 160, so you see, even if we are already at speed, there's still performance left in that engine, enough displacement, enough cylinders, and I told you also with the 53 review that I do not miss an 8-cylinder in that vehicle because it brings more weight on the front axle, and the 6-cylinder, I think, is the right size for this one here. In the coupe, the E400D, we drove the big diesel, a 3-liter 6-cylinder diesel in the coupe, and the fuel economy was not really better than with this one here. And the same experience I had when driving the GLE, 6-cylinder petrol in the GLE and 6-cylinder diesel in the GLE. And these, you know, exhaust, you know, the emission treatments and so on, and the old filter technology, they really, you know, put heavy pressure on the whole diesel situation consumption-wise. I mean, they're cleaner than before, but they also use more fuel. We clearly see that, that the difference between petrol and diesel consumption has diminished over these developments. Also very interesting finding for sure. And you might already know, I'm not sure if I mentioned it earlier, really a fan of the soft top convertibles and that's also one of the reasons while the Mercedes SL is coming with the soft top once again, so that new SL generation will be soft top once again. For, you know, obviously the advantages we shown you earlier: opening and closing it while driving, but also weight, weight uh, issues. So the hard top, of course, just brings more weight, less sportiness, and of course the trunk space, which is not always like a very convincing thing with convertibles but when you have the hardtop convertible then there's basically no trunk left and so here also today we have some and then also will be the case for the new Mercedes SL generation which could be our very next Mercedes convertible review probably in a static studio episode or something but I really hope you enjoyed I mean even if we didn't have the best weather here today I think we could bring you at least some sunshine in your living room or wherever you were watching this review. Thank you so much for tuning into the driving part and we'll lead over to our final conclusion. And now to our conclusion for today with the Mercedes E-Class convertible. Beautiful sunlight we have here right now and also a beautiful red color. No doubt about that. So the facelift has brought a more sporty design even in the base versions more so than here in the AMG line, or if you go for the true AMG model, E53, will be linked in the video description, that review definitely. And also interior upgrades, definitely good with the new MBOX, where you can also have voice input, both for the smaller and the bigger screen. The steering wheel, better to handle, sportier handling, looks also fancier, but in both versions, the normal and the AMG version, the capacitive input, the user input or user interface is worse than before. So that's the only catch with this vehicle. Other than that, a beautiful riding experience, sovereign driving, lot of comfort, especially with the air suspension, the optional air suspension is definitely a great choice. One of the most, if not the most comfortable and the most silent convertible on the market, an all-season convertible. Obviously, you see that right here. So, really good ratings. Fuel economy could be a little bit better. The new mild hybrid system is doing maybe a little bit for that, but not too much, not a real game changer as for that. And also more animal skin alternatives for here, for the E450 on the US market. That is missing, for example. 
So on the US I would go for the E53 and yeah, meanwhile, really good friends with the E53, but here in Germany, this one here, of course, could be a more comfortable choice. And then if you go for the fabric seats here as well, they will bring even more comfort than for this convertible and climate comfort, both for summer and winter times. But overall, I think we can all agree on that. This is one of the dream convertibles on the market. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Tune into the other E53 episode and also other interesting videos we have linked in the video description. See you there.